All right, so let's dive into it today. This is the House Appropriations hearing. It is, I think, one you guys don't want to miss. It's got Gary Gensler on it, and it's going to be an interesting one, so stay tuned right here. My name is Paul Bear. Welcome back into TechPath. Let's get into this. It's going to be a barn burner for you. There's a lot of clips here. We're going to be breaking down what Gensler is asking for, how this may play out in the crypto markets, all that good stuff. But before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, and that is iTrust Capital, long-term holding. Get into iTrust, go into a crypto IRA, whether you like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other assets out there. And guess what? You can also get XRP inside of iTrust Capital as well. No monthly fees. All you have to do is pay the light fee on when you're doing trades within your own account. That's how it works. Very simple. And you'll get a $100 funding reward if you use our link. So make sure and just check that down below. All right, so let's get into the first clip here. And this kind of sets it up for you guys, but listen in, it's going to be fun. Um, Mr. Gensler also has many earned qualifications that bring him to the position he now holds and has been a leading national expert on blockchain and other modern finance issues. Uh, he also has considerable experience from his time in the private sector uh, as a partner and co-head of finance at Goldman Sachs. Mr. Gensler, you talked a little bit about the Wild West of uh, crypto and how we deal with these entities that people are trying to figure out whether they're fish or fowl. Uh, I just want to express my thanks to you and your team at the SEC for being important cops on the beat and exercising the authorities that you do have under current law uh, to go after bad actors that are attempting to defraud investors uh, and, and the public. Right. We're talking about cryptocurrency, which we weren't talking about, at least here on the Hill, 10 years ago. Yeah, I, I don't think they were really talking about it you know, as much as three years ago uh, with what we've seen in the last year. A lot of advancements, obviously. He's setting up Gensler in a, in a good point, but uh, this is where it gets into Gensler wanting to get into more money. So listen into this clip right here. Thank you for inviting me to here to testify today, the Securities and Exchange Commission fiscal year 24 budget request. I really, I want to thank this committee for the approval last week of the funding the SEC. Technology is also rapidly transforming our markets and business models, whether it's electronic trading, the cloud, artificial intelligence, of course, predictive data analytics, and to chair also uh, mentioned things about the what I would call, not your words, the wild west of the crypto markets, rife with non-compliance where investors have put hard-earned assets at risk in a highly speculative asset class. It takes time and it makes sense for the SEC to grow along with the expansion. Again, we're just about the size we were seven years ago. For fiscal 23, we were able to get appropriated funds to add 400 positions Thus, the fiscal 24 request seeks the full year funding for those staff plus 170 more. This is a field that's been rife with fraud and scam and hucksters. There are also good faith actors. Um, our goal at the SEC is to bring the field into compliance within the securities law, where are these tokens and not prejudging any one of them, where they are securities, and then the platforms themselves that they come into compliance um, rather than what they're doing often now out of compliance is not protecting the investing public against fraud and manipulation, commingling their functions, and often in conflict with the, their investors, trading against their investors. Man, there are so many things wrong in that clip right there of him basically explaining this. The fact that he said a very interesting nuance there of essentially taking the loss to Ripple is that they're going to bring people, rather through litigation and enforcement, actually in through a, a, an actual process now. That it was a little bit of a, a, a change of tune. The other thing was that he's going after exchanges that were bad actors in the sense that they're not doing things like commingling funds, all that kind of things, which we already know many of these have, like Coinbase and others, that have not been doing that and have never done it. So these are the kind of things I think that he still kind of insinuates are happening. And he kind of led there with this whole idea of scam artists more though than the good faith actors, just like any other industry out there, you're gonna have good and bad. 170 more people, that's what they're asking for. This would all be going into what they already have. I wanna go to this next clip here, which is where they get a chance to drill down into his lost court cases, listen in. Do you keep a tally of the cost of lost cases 
when you bring an enforcement action and lose, have you kept track of the expenditures, the cost of that, both to the SEC and to those who have to defend against them? The, the, um, we, bring a, we either settle or bring between seven and 800 uh, uh, actions a year. We, we lose very few, Senator, but we are going to it from time to time. That's the nature of our uh, uh, processes. And so we bring cases, whether it's Ponzi schemes or pump and dump schemes or accounting fraud, insider trading, and we take this very seriously. We don't, we don't bring cases if we don't think there's been real wrongdoing. I don't think it's right to put uh, American taxpayers on the hook for defending themselves in these cases when you know that there's a high, odd, uh, high odds of losing. Remember, uh, he settled a case with Kim Kardashian, not a win. And then the fact that they're not even really going in and doing any kind of audit on the amount of money that they spent. I'm just kind of curious, how much do they spend on fighting Ripple? And then losing what I think is one of the biggest landmark decisions by Judge Torres in the fact that XRP is not a security. This, to me, is probably one of the biggest uh, knocks on Chair Gensler and also the SEC. And remember, he also said, hey, we're going to lose some. Does that mean that he's getting ready to maybe lose against Coinbase, lose against Grayscale? There's quite a few that are on deck. Let's go to this next clip, which gets into um, how Americans are playing into this. Let's listen in. The thing that surprises me, what I read and learned that one out of five Americans have invested or traded cryptocurrency. Are you aware of that? Uh, I've seen some of those statistics. One out of five? Uh, again, I can't vouch for the surveys. It's not done by the SEC. So this is an industry which you have said is, quote, rife with fraud, scams, and abuse. Did you say that recently? I, I would say it in this live hearing. It is, it is a field that is rife with fraud, scams, and abuse. And uh, there are a lot of uh, actors in this field that uh, are international, offshore, but they're still tapping on the American public's wish for a better future. Wow, a wish for a better future. Interesting statement there. 46 million Americans likely to buy crypto in the next year. This is what we're looking at in terms of just some of the data. 145 million American adults that already about 56%, let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys, of the U.S. population who says they own cryptocurrency or have invested in it. And this is, of course, why you guys watch our channel is because this is really kind of the opportunity for sovereign wealth, being able to build your own wealth through at least your own capacity. Because investing in the past, outside of the traditional stock exchange, which we all know is essentially a scam because they're front running us left and right. This is our first chance, when I say our, the normal population, the first chance to truly get a chance to front run these. And it feels as though the SEC is trying to take that away. Right here, this is the re reason for owning crypto, which again gets back to this. As an investment, 53%, from 67 in 21 to now more reality, 53. Fun or hobby, uh, or hobby uh, 40%. Uh, believe it will replace currencies around 32, so it's kind of low. Uh, to make secure payments, 31%, that's reasonable. Uh, and then I like that it's not government control, 31%. Want to buy NFTs now exist today, almost 30% there. This to me looks like a very educated consumer. It looks to me like an educated consumer who understands the pitfalls, understands the risks, and also understands the gains. That is an investor. And these are the things that the SEC is essentially trying to pull from us. So it, it gets into, I think, kind of just ridiculousness when Gensler starts to talk about this. It, it, you know, it's just side speak. We already understand, I think, where this is going. All right, so I want to get over to our next clip. And this is basically just an uneducated senator. Listen in. Celebrity endorsers, Matt Damon, noted financial advisor, Larry David, another financial advisor I trust implicitly, Tom Brady, who can't even get paid for doing the commercial, Kim Kardashian, and on and on. This doesn't sound like America. What's no, missing here? Um, it, it's a real pattern. I mean, there is a, a, there's a technology underlying it, a ledger technology called blockchain technology. And what's more, there's a tremendous amount of bad actors uh, in the field as well. A lot of them offshore preying upon U.S. investors. All right, so just, you know, kind of silly here. Just to give an example of this next clip here with Larry David, you can kind of see what we're talking about. Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, 
I don't think so. <laughs> Let's go over to our next clip, which is uh, talking about Bitcoin. Listen in. Debate among some quarters as to whether the CFTC has any authority in this industry. Do you think they do? Well, there are, there are some tokens that, um, uh, and Bitcoin, I'll just stay with that. Bitcoin itself uh, doesn't have the attributes of, of an investment contract under the securities laws. Um, but many tokens, without prejudging any one, have the attributes of an investment contract, meaning there's a group of individuals that the public is investing based in anticipation of profits based on their efforts. Uh, but as it relates to this, the Bitcoin, as I understand it, under the Commodities and Exchange Act, uh, there's anti-fraud and anti-manipulation, but they don't have what's called plenary rule-writing authority. Uh, but I'm sure Chair Benham could better answer some of those questions. All right, a couple of points there is really right now, as of today, XRP is the only token that has been identified a, from a court, a federal court, that it is not a, a security. So, I mean, you know, who's to say? Of course, Bitcoin is not. But the point being is that he's leaning on that around where Bitcoin is going. The likelihood is we're going to see a lot of tokens that do not fall under security guidelines and maybe, maybe will, in fact, fall under the CFTC. The other aspect about this is if we're starting to see this kind of thing roll out, why aren't we just going ahead and seeing the ETFs uh, start to move forward? He's already accepted that Bitcoin is not a problem. And why not just go ahead and start approving these BlackRock and the 21 shares, ARC ETFs, and let's just move on. That is another thing of power and control. And that's really what the SEC is boiling down to. All right, let's go to our next clip right here. Uh, this is a good one. I went through a hearing like this, walked out in the hallway. The reporter said, how much money has your campaign fund taken from the cryptocurrency business sector? And I said, none. I have nothing to do with them. She said, you're wrong. It's $20,000 and I can show you. I hadn't asked for it, didn't realize I'd received it, but they are playing everywhere they can to buy influence in the process. What's the best way for us to protect American consumers from cryptocurrency in the future? I'm not trying to prejudge any one token. Um, we, we could always use some more resources. So obviously just begging for people. Uh, but interesting, the fact that he didn't even know that he had taken uh, funds from people who, you know, different organizations who are investing in these politicians and whether you're left, right, you know, many people contribute to campaigns all the time. All right, let's go over to uh, this next clip on FTX. I think this will start to wrap this up. Mr. Chairman, why... Did you and the SEC allow the FTX fraud to happen? It also takes time to thoughtfully and by the book and by the law build investigations and bring actions. You could have sent down one investigator from the FT FTC with an ego like Mr. Bankman Freed and said, I want to send someone down for the F from the SEC and let them just watch you for a day. And he probably would have welcomed you in. He did everything but buy Mount Rushmore. Didn't, weren't you all curious? Where, where's the SEC? So, sir, I would say that the whole field has hurt m more Americans than it should. Yeah, but I'm talking about and, FTX. Where, were, where was everybody? Where, where was the SEC? And, and I would say where we were, were is my predecessor and also under... Uh, my honor to be chair, we've brought 140 or 150 actions. There are 15 to 20,000 tokens, and there are dozens of yeah, platforms. Yeah, but it was after the fact, and Gary. Why didn't we do that? Why didn't you do that? That's what we pay you folks to do. Well, I, I, again, I, I mean, I, I get all the Wells letter and all that. We've got we've gotten tens of thousands of people that lost a lot of money. Let me just broadly well, boy, say it's this, a big whole, one. this whole field, the whole crypto field is built on models that we wouldn't allow in traditional securities markets of co-mingling. The co-mingling that then you're why mentioning. Why did you allow FTX? And we've... we've why done, did you allow we've, FTX? We have vigorously, we investigate by the book. And on average, it You takes could have gotten time. an injunction. Half a day. Thank you. All right, so, so he's definitely getting grilled here. And just remember that this could have been really avoided across, and it has and was avoided. If you look at uh, this tweet here from Mark Cuban, 
You should read up on how Japan deals with regulation. When FTX crashed, no one got in Japan got hurt or lost money. Uh, and then no one here would have lost money had the U.S. or the SEC followed their examples by setting clear regulations that required separation of customers' funds and business funds from each other. So I think this is the whole point, is that the, the opportunity was already there. They understood what they could do. And I would say, and this is another thing I don't like when Gensler just lumps the entire industry into this. There's a lot, I would say, more within the industry, even today, that are trying to play by the rules as long as the rules were actually given. You already see this in Mika and what's happening within the EU. Hong Kong, Asia has already started to move very aggressively because they're setting guidelines and regulations. And these companies now are flowing in. I want to wrap up with here on our uh, flight, our, our, I should say flight of capital, which is a big deal right here. Listen in. What, what I've seen happen just this year alone is that U.S. share of stablecoin volume has gone down uh, U.S. blockchain developers' jobs have decreased here in America. And I think what's happening is that industry players are migrating overseas to other jurisdictions where the rules of the road are clearer for them. When you think about the rules of the road here in America, uh, the rule set is anything but clear. What worries me is that we're losing out on technology development and innovation that I would like to see happening here. Because the company that he's concerned about, FTX, is a Bahamian company. It's not an American company. The question I raise is, if we had a robust rule set here, would we have the ability to attract the licit actors to operate here in the United States of America? And is there a way to put clarity? I mean, I'm, I'd be interested in your concerns on that. So, so I actually think there are, are robust rule sets at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yet these this, firms this, are moving offshore. Yeah, because this is a field that in part is built on a business model of catch us if you can preying upon the investing public's desire for better life and future. Because when I talk to market participants, they tell me that there is a lack of clarity here, and that's, a, I think, a laudable goal. It's hard for us to, uh, you know, give you the means that you need when you come out with this kind of stuff. I don't know how to say that in a nice way. The nice way would be, uh, Commissioner Gensler, you are denied any additional funding You've already proven that you've not been able to protect the American people. You haven't been able to win in, in court. You're also going into litigious cases that aren't necessarily deemed. And then we have all of this loss of innovation, capital, businesses, jobs, et cetera, all because we don't have clarity. And the only reason we don't have clarity, now granted, you might look at the SEC and say, hey, well, because of all this you know, frivolous litigation, it's actually pushed so much pressure onto Congress put so much pressure onto policymakers, which actually may be true about how this plays out. This is how much is crypto, how much crypto is taxed in the United States. You'll pay up to 37% on short-term capital gains, just like any other capital gains. Uh, and then around 20% tax on long-term ca capital gains. And then even though NFTs are looked at as collectibles, you could be taxed up to 28% on those. So look at that. And imagine, we're already seeing normal tax laws apply just like everything else. The only difference, the clarity and the ability to actually go out and invest here in the United States where we could even earn you know, a profit and be able to pay these taxes. So these are the kind of things that we are faced right now. I think the issue right here is that uh, Gensler is going in, begging for more money. I think the key here, guys, and I implore you to reach out to your lawmakers, your own people in your organizations, because at the state and local level, it's where it matters the most. Get to your representative, your House rep, because there's a lot happening right now, especially on the floor of the House, and let them know your position. That's the only way to really help guide the future of this, and it will give more of these lawmakers power because they understand that their constituents understand what's up. And that, my friend, is the way to beat it. Hopefully this will play out and uh, get things moving in the right direction. All right, if you guys are listening and over on the podcast, make sure and jump over here to the YouTube channel. It's one of the places where we do, of course, all the breakdowns, you get these clips and much more, but also you can join into our Diamond Circle. It's uh, a link we usually leave down below. It's very easy to get to. It's additional content, all that good stuff. And if you guys want to reach me, catch me out there on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Tech Bath. Thank <laughs> you.